Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer and Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter to find out even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now, our guest today is Kevin Murphy. Kevin is the author of the brand new book, The Three Rooms, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. You can find out more about him and his important work at www.thetherooms.com. Now, part of what's special about Kevin is that he is a former Wall Street Managing Director for Citigroup, high school and collegiate wrestling champion, community activist, speaker, coach, and of course, author of the book, The Three Rooms. Welcome, Kevin Murphy. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you for having me on. Now, Kevin, what is the main message of your new book, The Three Rooms? I think the main message is that we all have control over how we feel, and yet we relinquish that control to everything that we see and hear in the physical world. So we're always letting everything around us affect how we feel instead of starting with how we feel and letting that affect everything we see and hear. That's a really important message. Now, this kind of book doesn't seem to fit with your background, 33 years in the corporate world. How did you end up writing a book on thoughts and consciousness? I think you know, I spent 33 years with one firm, but it's really a combination of six different firms through mergers. And through mergers, you learn a lot about yourself and other people's behavior, especially you know, in times of uh, adversity and how we deal with adversity. And I think I also was always very curious as to why some people that appear to have so little seem so happy, and other people that seem to have so much here so unhappy. And so those kind of, you know, thoughts, you know, um, let me keep looking within and, you know, trying to find, you know, much you know, bigger answers. And um, eventually, just, you know, one day I started getting this premonition that I was going to write a book. Mm. And it, it entailed three doors. And there was an image of, you know, the past label on one and the present on another door and the future on another door. And eventually those three doors became three rooms as I kept describing the, the place or the room behind the doors where our thoughts go. That's really fascinating. Now, how did you come up with the metaphor of the three rooms? Like, I, I think it's, you know, from that image, um, it, you know, again, the three doors turned into the three rooms, but then the premise just kept getting stronger and stronger. And the premise being that, our experience of life is not based on what we do or what we have, it's based on what we think. And our thoughts can only be in one of three places. They can be in the past or the past room, they can be in the future or the future room, or they can be in the present or the present room. And whichever room your thoughts are in determines your experience of life in that moment. Because of course, our thoughts can go back and forth from, from room to room and, and from past to present to, to future. And so the key is to observe which room your thoughts are in. And it is that act of observation that separates our awareness from our thoughts. And that awareness is that, that's that consciousness or that divine consciousness that all the mystics have always talked about. That's what we want to connect to. Now, what's fascinating about your metaphor in the book, The Three Rooms, is that when I'm doing a medical intuitive reading, one of the things I can look at is literally where a person's energy is. So, you know, you've got, you know, 100% of your energy. And if it's like 99% in the past, well, you're literally dragging your energy around, right? And, and you know, if it's in the future, well, then you're, you're also stuck in worry. So it's really only when we practice pulling our energy more and more into the present moment that we have energy available to live our current life. So this is something that I definitely look at. And if a person's in the past or the future, then I'm gonna be looking at what are the issues that are causing you to be in the past 
or in the future. So I, I think it's a beautiful metaphor that you've written a book about this. Now, of course, there are a lot of books that talk about the power of our thoughts. How is your book any different? I think it looks to, um, to simplify it because like you said, there's energy, um, you know, everything is made up of energy. And if you think about a thought, like what are our thoughts? You know, a thought is a vibration that is stored as energy in this field of potential probabilities and it's waiting to manifest. And so how do those thoughts manifest? You know, those thoughts, you know, they're just vibrations, just like everything, you know, in the physical world, you know, that we interpret is just light waves and sound waves that we interpret everything we see and hear. And likewise, in the non-physical world, our thoughts, you know, and, and emotions, you know, are just vibrations that we're constantly in, interpreting. And so the, the vibration of our higher self is the same vibration as source energy itself. And that's the source, that's the vibration or the energy that we want to tap into. And all of that's, you know, and that's where our, you know, inspired ideas come from. But these resistant thoughts that we have you know, are based on when we're not connected to that source. And that's where these, you know, when we're getting all of our, you know, um, feedback and our emotions based on everything we see and hear, that's, you know, that's when we're kind of separated from our thoughts. And that's, that's the energy that we're tapping into in the same field of, of, of um, you know, uh, possibilities, because all thoughts, whether they're resistant thoughts or whether they're inspired ideas are all stored in the same field of potential probabilities. Yeah, and now here's another correlation with the work that I do and the way I see a human. So the way I see a human is you have a physical body, we all know what that is. You also have an energy body, which includes your breath, your chakras and your acupuncture system. You have your emotional body, which is the feeling state that Kevin Murphy's talking about. And it's so important that we work on a regular basis, or maybe not work, maybe play, maybe learn to relax into this field of joy that's available to us. Um, but this mind that we have includes our thoughts and beliefs. And finally, you have a soul which is who you really are. But what's important about changing our story, like Kevin Murphy's talking about, is your, I'll put it as simply as I can, your soul controls your mind, your mind controls your emotions, your emotions control your energy, and your energy controls your physical. So if you have dis-ease or illness, somehow, this disease or illness actually begins in your energy field. It begins in your spiritual, in your thoughts and your beliefs, this mind that we're talking about. It begins in the emotions, or, and then it goes into your energy field, and then it comes and affects your physical. So when you want to clear or heal dis-ease, you've got to work through all five levels. So it's so important to change your story if you have disease or illness. Now, Kevin Murphy, can you touch briefly on each of the three rooms and what is the significance that you see for each one? So well, the, you know, the past room is when we're thinking about things in the past that didn't make us feel good. And so you know, it could be anger over something that someone said or we perceive someone has said to us or you know about us. It can be guilt about things that you know, someone made us feel guilty or, you know, we're really good at creating guilt within ourselves, things that we should have done. We're constantly thinking about things that don't make us feel good. And in the, the future or the future room is about thinking about things in the future that have yet happened and typically thinking of a worst case scenario. <laughs> and so that's, you know, once again, creating, you know, negative emotions in our body, whether it's anxiety or stress or some kind of fear-based emotions. And when you're in the present room, that's when you no longer have in this linear time you know, um, span, you no longer have thoughts of the past that are creating negative emotions or fears in the future that are creating negative emotions. And you are centered in the, in the present and you're feeling things of you know, the most important of, of all, that, that divine connection being love. But it's also joy and happiness and appreciation, all those kinds of emotions. That's where we're supposed to be. 
that is when we're connected to this, you know, this universal consciousness. And it is our thoughts that pull us out of that present room, whether into the past room or the future room. And we know it by how we feel. That's a great explanation. And, you know, when I think about who's really good at being in the present, I just think about my dog. <laughs> and perhaps you have some good examples about who's actually good at being in the present. Who do you think is actually really good at being in the present moment? You make a great um, analogy with the dog. And, and um, my wife is not a big dog lover. Um, and so just, just never, you know, never had one. Um, but we agreed to let our daughter get a guinea pig. And so we have a guinea pig. And you want to talk about living in the present? <laughs> this guinea pig lives in the present. Should we take her out you know, at night and put her, you know, watch some TV and, and, and hold her in her, in her arms? But all through the day, if you pop in to, to feed her and she's just calm and, you know, and, and she's present, you know, and we call it, you know, pleasant as well. There's, there's no change in the demeanor. And that's really where she's there's no worry about anything in the future. And there's, you know, there's no stress about the past. It's just living in the moment and that you can learn a lot about people like that. And I think, you know, from, let's just say from humans and living in the physical world, you know, there's people like Eckhart Tolle that, that talk about, you know, the power of now. And, and I think that's, um, it's a tremendous focus on, on, you know, being in the now and more and more today you hear things about, you know, mindfulness and, being in the now or living in the present. So people really understand how important it is to monitor your thoughts and be in the present. Unfortunately, most of us just don't do a very good job at it. And so the, you know, the whole concept of the three rooms is to try to make it easier, that you know when you're not in the present simply by how you feel and you're not feeling really comfortable and peaceful or joyful then you know your thoughts have to be something you know somewhere else, and it's your perception of those thoughts as well. Remember, it's not everything just that we see and hear, because you can see things. You know, you can see two people talking on the street as you stop at a red light. That's not going to. That thought's not going to stick in your head, you know, or that you know that you know what you that sight you saw. But if it was someone that you knew, then you say, "Oh, there's Bill." Oh, and that will stick, and then. Any kind of thoughts you have, maybe you had an argument with Bill yesterday. Now that will start to produce some, you know, some emotions in you. Now, what if it was you had an argument with Bill and he's talking to someone else that, that you also know? Now you start thinking, oh, that's Bill, and we had an argument yesterday, and now he's talking to, you know, to John. He's probably talking about me and saying negative things about me, and we have these perceptions. And now all of a sudden, all these negative emotions, and now he starts saying, you know, I knew Bill wasn't a good guy. He's talking about me. And now you go around talking negative things about Bill. And so it's all based on our perceptions of, of what we see and hear. And ultimately, Bill could have been saying nice things about you. And you turned around and, and, and turned the whole situation around, creating all these negative emotions when you didn't have to. That's a, a great explanation. And, you know, another group that I feel it knows how to get into the present is actually um, athletes. If you're in a competitive situation or you're a wrestler, right? <laughs> I'm sure when you're wrestling, you can't be worrying about what's going to happen or thinking about the past. Uh, you want to make a comment about how wrestling and competitive athlete, athletes learn how to be in the present? Well, I, I think you make a great point. And I think all, um, all competitive athletes, and it goes from, and from Olympic champions to, you know, to world champions to just amateur you know, um, softball players that are playing on a, in a Tuesday night league or in a bowling league or something. You, know, you have to be in the present. You have to block everything else out and focus on that moment. And it's all about you know, what you're focusing on. And everybody knows if you, if you show up and you start thinking about something in the past, people say, oh, he's, he's just not himself today or he's not playing like he can or all those kind of things because they're not in the present because they're bringing other things with them and their mind keeps wandering. And so it is all about that focus of focusing on the present moment and being in the present room, as I'd like to say instead of letting your emotions, you know, and letting your thoughts pull you out. So once again, it's, it's that awareness 
you know, of your thoughts and, you know, being aware of when you get pulled out of, you know, you know, that present moment. So you can do it during, during an athletic event. You can, the first quarter, you're, you're not, you're not playing well, or, you know, you're not shooting the basketball right. And the coach says, what's going on? You got to get back in the game. And all of a sudden something clicks, you go, all right, yeah, I got to, I got to refocus and get back into it. And then you can, and all of a sudden they say, wow, look at him in the second quarter or in the second period, he's a different person. What changed? It's the same physical person. What changed was his focus and being coming back into the present and not letting his thoughts pull him out. Yeah, that's a great example. Another time that I think that we can practice being in the present moment is through mind-body exercise such as yoga. I know that I've taught yoga for 23 years and I know when we're doing balance poses, for example, if you start thinking a lot, you, it's almost like your thoughts have actual weight and it's much harder to come into tree pose or king dancer and hold it if you're thinking too much. But when you really slide into this quiet mental space, then it's easier to hold your balance and it's easier to come into that calmness that's required. So, I, I think there's, so, Catherine, there's two things there. I think one, you're talking about focus and, and focus. That is important because I do like the hot yoga, the, the Bikram yoga. And you're right. When you're holding a pose and it's hot, you, you have to really focus on being in the moment, being present and, you know, not thinking about anything else because then your balance starts to go. But what is that also? It's also that that, that blending of, of your body, your physical body and your non-physical body, your soul. And, and when you bring them in alignment, that's what the yoga is all trying to do. It's all trying to bring that into the alignment and that focus then brings you back into the present. The present. Yeah, so that's that mind, body, spirit integration that we talk about in natural healing. Now, Kevin M Murphy, if so many people know that we should live in the present or in the now, why do so many of us get stuck in the past or future rooms, do you think? I think, once again, it's, it's focusing on everything that we see and hear. And it's just so easy to get pulled out. And it's so easy to get pulled out of, from, from um, someone let's just say even a co, you know, especially if it's a coworker or someone we see every day and they did something that you perceived as being a slight against yourself. And so now you have to see them every day and every day you see them, it reminds you of that negative emotion. And depending on the degree of what you think, you know, or you perceive as that being that slight, if it was really strong, every time you see them, you feel that negative emotion and that continues to build, you know, in your body. And so, you know, being reminded constantly of something keeps taking you back there. And, you know, we need to, we need to get away from, um, you know, that the, the feeling that we were at the, totally at the effect of them and there's nothing that we can do because we do have control. We can let it go. And there's things simply by being as such, by being aware that that person is making you feel, you know, angry every time you see them. And this is, you know, this is not something I want to feel. And of course, you know, forgiveness is one of the ways that from the past we can come back into the, into the present. Um, unfortunately, we all have different degrees of forgiveness. How often have you, you know, heard people say like, well, you know, I'm a forgiving person, but this time they crossed the line. And there is no line. We, and we all have a different line of what forgiveness is. The true forgiveness is letting them, you know, is forgiving them and letting those negative emotions go based on our perception because it's going to bring us back into the present room and not let us continue to feel those negative emotions. Yeah, and I'm a big believer in Haponapona, which is a forgiveness mantra. And um, there are several forgiveness mantras that help to pull your energy out of the past. A simple one is, I'm sorry, um, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And you can start by forgiving yourself. So Hoponopono is very powerful for pulling your energy out of the past. Now, it seems simple enough, Kevin Murphy, to switch rooms, but sometimes you're just so mad at somebody, you can't let it go. What do you do then? Well, you know, that's what's again, that, that comes to forgiveness, you know, and, and if you can't, um, but you can't just say, like, understand someone says, 
have to forgive them and then you can let it go. And saying, I'm going to forgive someone, but still feeling those negative emotions and still believing they did something intentionally to hurt you is not going to help. Because every time you still see that person, it's still going to generate those emotions. So we have to say there is another way to look at this. Because once again, it's not our thoughts, but it's our, you know, our interpretation of our thoughts or it's an, our interpretation of what happened. And so we have to change our perception about it. Because if you think about it, someone, someone that keeps dragging you into the past room and, and bringing negative emotions you know, into you, um, it simply means you're... You're viewing them differently than your own higher self would view them. Your own higher self or soul is not condemning them, is not still mad at them, is not judging them. We're doing that. And that negative emotion is the disconnect between the way that our own soul views them and the way that we are, or let's say our ego is viewing them. And so you have to say, you know, how is this making me feel? And knowing that it's negative, you know, it's making you feel negative, you have to say that that's, I'm not looking at it the right way. And another just more funny way to do it is like that usually when someone else does something to us, they're, you know, they, might, they may have said something that, let's say, hurt our feelings. And then they're going smiling and talking with other people. They seem fine. And think about it. You keep thinking about it. You're getting angrier and angrier. They're the ones that you believe, you know, violated you, and yet they seem fine. They're, and there's something wrong with that picture. You have to say, well, I'm not going to let that keep going. I'm not going to let them just be, go on and be happy, and, and I'm going to be miserable. Now, you can't get them to be miserable, and that's what some people try to do. Like, oh, he made me miserable, so I'm going to make him miserable. Instead, it's, well, he's happy. You know what? I'm going to no longer be miserable. It's just not worth it, so I'm going to let it go. And I know that. By definition, every time I think of them and have, or that person and have negative emotions, I'm pulling myself away from the present room. I'm doing that to myself, so I'm gonna let that go. Yeah, and I wanna say that when I'm working with people as a medical intuitive healer, you'll know that you're done with forgiveness if you can remember or retell the story and not feel any negative emotions. So you just report something like the, you know, the weather happened, this or that happened. And this is so important when it comes to natural healing, because every feeling, every emotion that you have creates neuropeptides. And these emotions, these neuropeptides are literally stored in specific emotions. So if somebody has anger, for example, that's going to affect your liver and your heart among other things, or your bladder. So you have to realize that thoughts are things, your emotions create your biochemical reality, and you can heal yourself at a very deep level by letting go of these things. And I'm frequently consulted as a medical intuitive healer by people, and they wanna say, well, but what's the physical cause? And I can talk to them about the physical cause at great lengths. And, and they say, you know, I, I don't tell me that I have to, you know, heal my relationship with my family or, or don't tell me that for me to, you know, heal this pain in my nose, I've got to deal with my depression. And it's like, it's inter, it's exquisitely interconnected and in that you are frequently surprised about how your physical healing occurs when you change your story, as Kevin Murphy is suggesting, and change the thoughts that are literally creating these negative emotions. So Catherine, you make a, a critical point, because it's, once again, it's not just the thought, it is the emotion that is tied to that thought. And you're absolutely right, That's, you, you, can't, you can't just change the thought if that emotion is still there, because the next time, you may say, okay, I forgive them, but then the next time you see them, if you, if you haven't changed that emotion or addressed that emotion, it's going to come back. It has, you have to be able to see that person again, be able to talk to them or talk about them, but not the same or without the same perception that caused all those negative emotions. So you're right on point there that it's, it's, we have to change the perception, change the emotions thinking, you know, it's linked to the thought because it's not... 
it's not realistic to think that we're just never going to see the person. Well, I'll be fine as long as I don't ever see them. You know, you have to be fine even though you see them. And just because you forgive someone and let it go, it doesn't mean you have to do lunch still. You can just, you know, wish them well. And, and, but now the next time you see them, you've forgiven them. And you've also made a really important point earlier. You always have to forgive yourself as well. Yeah, often the most important person to forgive is yourself. And I make an analogy with forgiveness like house cleaning. I may have vacuumed the floors, but I haven't gotten around to cleaning the toilets. Or I may have vacuumed the floors and the toilets, but I still have to wash the windows. And forgiveness, I feel for most of us, is a daily, weekly practice. And if you're unclear about what to do to improve your health, then start by forgiveness. Start with forgiveness. Because again, these thoughts, like Kevin's talking about, are literally creating your health. And most people are in denial about how much their story and the emotions created by their story are literally making them sick. Now, Kevin Murphy, when we realize that we're getting dragged into the past room because you know we're all human and we have memories, and you don't want to go there, how do you recommend that we prevent that from happening? We have to understand that people who are trying to drag us into the past room is because that's where they like to go. They're really good. It's like somebody, you know, you know, saying, Hey, no, I have to talk to you, Catherine. You know, I have some things on my mind. And then you, you go talk to them and they have, you know, a list of things that they are bringing up that, you know, that you might've said six months ago that you don't even remember. So remember you said this and you hurt my feelings. You say, well, I, I don't really remember that. And they just keep going back. And then you're kind of stammering saying, well, I, I I don't really remember and there's you know there's a big disconnect so number one understanding that people who want to drag you back into the past room and rehash things that you know that don't feel comfortable then you have to say look well, i i don't really recall that i'm sorry if i if i hurt you back then but where do we want to go from here because you have to bring it back in because if you're used to living in the present more and more and you're feeling good. Someone dragging in the past is you're going to their home turf. And, you know, you're just not going to be comfortable. You're not going to be successful. So you have to keep bringing it back into, okay, well, now we're here. Where do we go? Yeah. And here's another way. Once you realize that your soul controls your mind and your mind controls your emotions and your emotions control your energy and your energy body controls your physical a good, another good way is to realize and recognize and take responsibility for what a powerful soul you actually are. And if you think about something that happened in the past, a really good question to ask yourself is, why did I create that? So rather than seeing yourself as a victim and playing the victim role, you can get out of the victim and get out of the past by just saying, why did I create that? And when you ask that question, why did I create that? Then you're going to get a lot of insight for the present. Well, maybe I needed to learn forgiveness. Maybe I needed to learn how to be stronger. Maybe I had to learn something about myself or how to interact with people in a, in a more productive way. And that's, um, that's a really powerful point that you made that, you know, people, you know, and because some people have gone through some really traumatic experiences and it's, you know, it's easy to just say, well, you have to forgive and you have to forget. And sometimes it is, like you said, really, really difficult. But when you come back, instead of constantly going back and focusing on what was and what happened, instead focusing right now on, 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 on you know, not only looking at what is, but what can be, now you can no longer be the victim, but you can say, you know, one, why did that happen? Or, you know, and it's hard for some people to say, like, why did I create that? But if we do create our reality, it's our perception of, you know, um, then you, you know, if you really did create it in some way, but you have to say, you know, what, what can I do from here? And maybe it's, maybe it's being a spokesperson for something that happened to you to help other people from that and, and empowering you going forward. And that's, that's a, you know, that's a real powerful you know, realization that you can have for yourself going forward, but you can only do it when you step back into the present room and not be focusing on those negative emotions. 
Um, but there's some people who have had really um, powerful, you know, negative things happen to them and have turned around and been true inspirations for, you know, a whole generation of people that um, you say, wow, look at what they've overcome. And then you have to ask yourself, you know, well, I'm, I'm kind of holding on to this, but look what, look what Catherine overcame. Look what this person overcame. Why am I worried about this little thing? If that person could overcome and be a positive role model going forward, what they've done. Yeah. Now, let's talk about how your techniques in the three rooms can help people overcome stress. Because one of the things we know in natural healing is that stress basically causes disease. And, you know, we're all facing stress and it, there's, life is much more stressful than it was, say, 30 years ago. So how can the three rooms help us do a better job of healing our stress? But I think that's, that is one of the biggest you know, issues for, um, you know, for generation people today. And people constantly worrying about things you know, in the future that have yet to happen or thinking of worst case scenarios and kind of getting stuck in the future room, as I, you said. And you, know, and you talked about from a, you know, from a scientific standpoint earlier, like each thought you know, produces, you know, releases a chemical, you know, and thoughts of you know, stress-related thoughts in the future realm about things that, you know, what can go wrong, you know, releases cortisol, goes into the hormonal systems, you know, sends messages back to the brain to produce more thoughts of stress, and, and we get stuck in those, in those cycles. And it's because we keep looking at what is, and then we're projecting out into the future, like for our desires, you know, and, you know, and we keep thinking about what isn't in the future. And so we want something, looking at what is, and, and we, it isn't yet in the future. And that's what that, those negative thoughts keep pushing those desires out. If we keep thinking we don't have it, or we can't have it, or, you know, I'm not healthy now, you, your desire is to be healthy, or your desire is to be wealthy, and you're saying, I'm not wealthy now is something that I want, but you keep saying I am not, then that, that keeps pushing that desire away and, more, and just keeps creating more and more stress. And the way to change that stress um, and that cycle of stress is to come back into the present and it is focusing on what can be. Because we can't change our future by thinking about the future or living in the future, we can only change our future right now by thinking about what can be. Because by definition, any kind of goal or you know, vision that we have has not yet manifested. And if you need the manifestation of it in order to believe it and feel good about it, then, then it's not going to come. But if you can imagine something in the future and think of it as what can be, and then imagine it, how it would feel to already happen, and you're doing that in the present room. Now you can start to attract the things into your life that will bring that desire about, because you're coming from the place of it already happening. You already feel that satisfaction of, of having that desire achieved or manifested, and you're feeling it now. Instead of feeling that stress, so you change feelings of stress, what isn't to feelings of, of accomplishment and appreciation for what has already happened. And it's a, it's a really hard concept to think about something as if it already happened. But that is the key to creating your own future, um, imagining that future. And all visionaries can do the same thing and they have that focus and they have that vision and they stick to it as if it's already happened and then they're attracted again to all the things to make it happen. Yeah, yes, and you know, one way that you can get into the now, like Kevin Murphy's talking about, is to, with a technique called scripting. So when you script, you write in present tense, not like I will be wealthy or I will be healthy or I will be happy. You write a story or rewrite a story I am happy, I am abundant, I am vibrantly healthy. And you write your story in present tense. Now, Kevin P. Murphy, many people on a spiritual path ask the question, who am I? Why do you ask a slightly different question? Where am I? 
So the, the who am I is an iconic question that um, you know, people always ask. And when they ask that, they're not asking who am I being the I that everybody else is because you know who you are. You know, if you're, you know, if you're a, a, a fireman, you don't say, well, who am I? I was a fireman yesterday and who am I today? Am I you know, a policeman or am I a doctor? Like, you know, you know who you are from the outside. You're really asking who am I on the inside? And who am I, that I that nobody else can see? And that's where like, why did I say that? You know, what's, what's going on inside of me? That's really kind of what you're asking for. And who we are or what we are really doesn't change. On the outside, you know, our occupation and things can change all the time. That I that everyone else sees. The I on the inside never changes. And that is our eternal being. So, you know, what we are are just eternal beings that have manifested in these physical bodies in order to experience ourselves. And that's the same for all of us. But what does change is our thoughts can constantly change and our perception about who we are. So that's why it's so critical to ask, where am I? So all day long, just constantly asking, you know, where am I? Or in other words, you know, where are my thoughts? or even better yet, which room are my thoughts in? And if you think about it, the simple asking and answering of that question, where are my thoughts or which room are my thoughts in? You have to be aware of your thoughts. And that awareness or that consciousness, once again, is what we want to constantly keep connecting to. That's a really great, great advice. Now, Kevin Murphy, you talk in your book, The Three Rooms, how there are different emotions associated with each room. And as we talked about, how you feel is constantly creating the biochemical state of your body that contributes to your health or your disease. How did you go about assigning the emotions to each room? Well, since you're, I, I use more logic than anything else that people could associate with. Typically, when someone's thinking of in the past, like if they're feeling things like anger or resentment or guilt or revenge or hatred and these kind of emotions, it's typically because of something they're thinking of in the past. And so we put them in the past room. Thinking emotion in the future, things that, you know, for anxiety or stress or feelings of lack, I don't have enough, those I can put and associate them with the future room. But really, you know, sometimes people say, well, this emotion should really be in the future room, not in the past room. And it, it really comes down to two emotions, love and fear. And so I look at all the emotions in the present room are just derivatives of love, joy, compassion, appreciation, things that make you feel really good. And all the emotions, whether it's in the past room, anger, hatred, you know, resentment, guilt, or the emotions in the future room are all derivatives of fear. And so if they're very simply, you know, you can't get caught up in, well, which, which emotions should be, belong in the past room or which emotions belong in the future room? If they're fear-based emotions, they're not in the present room. And that's, where you, that's your reminder to come back into the present to let those thoughts that are triggering those negative emotions, those fear-based emotions, to let them go and come back into the present. Now, you talk about the benefits of keeping our thoughts in the present room. Are there some techniques that you can recommend for people for staying grounded in the present moment? I think the, the where am I, that question, that simple question, is there's, there's no better constant reminder um, because it, it once again, it always connects you to that, that consciousness that we all want to connect to. Now, there's a meditation. There's a lot of talk about meditation. More and more people are espousing the, you know, the real benefits of it. And you cannot underestimate the benefits of meditation, especially early in the morning, you know, when you first wake up. You know, it's so powerful. Unfortunately, I hear a lot of people say, well, yeah, I, um, I, I know it's important. I, I've tried it, and, and it just doesn't work for me. And it's not that it doesn't work for you. It's just that you either, you know, haven't given it enough time, you know, and to, to, to really um, allow it to, you know, to work. And think about meditation is just, 
is the absence of thoughts. It is coming back into the present room because it's not allowing those thoughts to pull you into the past room or pull you into the into the future room. So, you know, it's you know, Ra Raul Julia, the, um, the humanitarian and, and, and actor. You know, he once said that you know people talk about you know meditation, but life itself is meditation. And I think it's really important to keep going, bringing that you know that awareness all through the day instead of just in the morning and then going out and then you see that person that got you upset or you hear something and you start listening to, you know, to, to the news and, and now you're just brought, you know, right out of your peaceful you know, types of um, uh, demeanor or emotions and, and you're gone for the rest of the day, you know, from that, you know, from that piece that you started with. So you need reminders throughout the day to keep bringing us back in the, into the present room. We have all these other triggers that constantly pull us out of the present moment and you know, remind us of all the things that we're you know, mad about. And we need more reminders you know, to bring us back into the present. So Kevin Murphy, if someone we know or live with is sick and going through major health issues, how do we not worry about them so that we don't pull our own energy into the future room? Well, that, that's a really good question and a powerful question because um, there's caring for a loved one is, is a really important um, thing that we can all do. And, and it tugs at our emotions. And it's you know, easy to just say, well, you know, I don't, you know, don't want to feel one way or the other because it really you know, uh, sinks in deep. Um, and there's, you know, we need to have you know, empathy for people, but from, from someone who's really going through, um, you know, let's just say, you know, an, an illness or, you know, really struggling, you're helping them. You know, compassion is the most powerful way you know, to view the situation and to help them. And to me, compassion is a combination of empathy or, you know, trying to appreciate where they're coming from and what they're going through and joy. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, why, how is joy in there. Well, joy is the realization that this is only a temporary thing that they're going through. They are, you know, they are experiencing this physical world just like we all are. Their physical body may be struggling, but they're, you know, they have an eternal being just like us. And they're going, we're all going through this, you know, this temporary, you know, experience in the, in the physical world. And knowing that they're going to feel you know, the, the love, the joy, um, and that, that, you know, uniting with that, that universal consciousness that we all share. So that's the joy, knowing that it's temporary, but also appreciating what they're going through and having that feeling of empathy. So to me, there's no greater, you know, emotion in the world than compassion. And thinking it from both of those, understanding where they are, but also knowing where they're going to end up and having that combined to be compassion. Yeah, and I would, I would add, as a medical intuitive healer, I see all of my clients as whole and unbroken because you are a soul having a human experience and you're constantly connected to this field of unconditional love and unlimited resources. So when you start to see yourself and everyone around them as whole, and complete and at the soul level, then as Kevin said, we can be a little bit more patient about what people are actually going through. So Kevin Murphy, author of The Three Rooms, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. Any final thoughts for our audience? Well, I'd just say, you know, once again, we do have control over how we feel. And, you know, it's, and how we feel, the biggest effect is what we think. And so, you know, focus on you know, where your thoughts are, focus on, on you know, how you're feeling, and you can always you know, feel better if you're feeling negative emotions. So, you know, it's that combining with that, that, you know, that inner soul that we all have, um, and that soul is always waiting in the present room. And so when we're feeling negative emotions, it's simply once again, we're we're perceiving situations different than our own soul would perceive. You've been listening to Kevin Murphy, author of The Three Rooms, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. 
find out more about Kevin and his important work at www.thetherooms.com. This is Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer and Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. While you're there, sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. And remember, when you keep your energy in the present moment, in the present room, as Kevin Murphy would say, that's when natural healing occurs. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to seeing you on the Natural Healing Show at UK Health Radio next time.